Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me for tonight's podcast, THI publisher Andrew Jones and our very own director of basketball recruiting. And he's also a basketball analyst for us, David Sisk. And guys, we're here for another episode of our THI season preview podcast. This is the Leaky Black edition. We're going to be previewing his game, talking a little bit about Leaky and kind of some expectations we have for him this season. But guys, let's dive right in to Leaky Black. He's a guy that is coming into his junior season now, averaged 2.5 points his freshman year, 6.5 points last year, around 30 minutes per game. He was a guy that really since he arrived at Carolina has dealt with his fair share of injury issues. I know last year he had a big – from the turf toe to the thumb, it, it was a tough year for, for Leaky Black to stay on the court. But, A.J., first of all, I want to start with you. Um, Leaky Black, he's a guy we were talking about a little bit off camera that we really – we haven't really seen the real Leaky Black yet, have we? He's a guy that's – he's just dealt with a lot of stuff since he got to Chapel Hill. No, he had a distant reserve role as a freshman. That team mm-hmm. had a real iron core. And then he got hurt up at Georgia Tech. He actually played pretty well in that game. Mm-hmm. And he got injured. And I remember seeing him after the game on crutches and and uh, and just – you know, you look at him and say, boy, he'd be lucky to come back. It seemed like it was that bad. He did come back and played a couple minutes in the NCAA tournament. But, but you know, he lost a lot of development there. Lost, lost a lot of time in practice against those guys. Mm-hmm. And then last year just banged up. You know, Roy told us in summertime a year and a half ago that he thought Leaky Black was an NBA player, would have an NBA future. And then I think a lot of people sort of judged him all year based on what Roy said. Of course, Roy had no idea he was going to, you know, 47 body parts were going to uh, were going to be banged up and, and aching mm-hmm. throughout the year. And I still think to Leaky's credit, he didn't he never really uses an excuse and didn't really tell us and how much discomfort he was in and where all the parts, uh, the discomfort, the uncomfortable parts were coming from. So it affected him. It affected so much of his game. I was just telling you guys a minute ago, he played 950 minutes last year, second most of the team, shot 46 free throws. Yeah, it's not a lot. The guy that we've been told exists just wasn't really there a year ago. And and if that part of your game is gone, it's going to affect so much else. So uh, I asked him a couple of weeks ago when we got a chance to talk to the players, I said, what does a healthy leaky black look like? And he said, I can – pass the ball. I can shoot the ball. I can drive. I mean, he's sort of a jack of all trades kind of guy. And Garrison Brooks said that as well. He called him a Swiss army knife. So I, I, my expectation for Leakey this year is he's going to be a better, quicker, more emphatic version of what we saw a year ago. That's and amazing. a healthier one who doesn't grimace in pain nearly as much. Yeah. He's doing that a lot last year. Anything you want yeah. to add to that, David? He's obviously, I know Leakey's not a guy you've seen a ton and ton of like, you know, me and AJ have throughout the past couple of years, but Anything you want to add to what, what AJ said about Leakey? Well, number one, I, I just – looking at his numbers here, mm-hmm. uh, last year 6.5 points, 2.6 assists, five rebounds. But I noticed, like, his assist-to-turnover ratio uh, in his career at North Carolina in two years, he has 110 assists against just 72 turnovers. So that's pretty impressive for a guy that's been out there on the wing at six foot eight. So obviously mm-hmm. he can handle the ball. You come off the perimeter, you get five rebounds per game. That's a strong number. So I look at those numbers and say, well, he can rebound the ball. He can pass the ball. He takes care of it. Tells me that he's got some intelligence. Um, but it's like uh, Andrew said, he doesn't get to the foul line a whole lot. Uh, 46 foul shots uh, in – 32 games you know he's averaging roughly one and a half a game but the thing uh-huh. is from the field he only shot 35.9 percent mm-hmm. uh from the field and then 25.4 from three so you're like okay you're not getting to the rim you're not shooting the ball uh, uh at a high uh, clip you know what are you giving this there so and uh, as you guys said that probably may have a lot to do with injury we hope it does so that's obviously the thing there. You know, he can contribute some things uh, to the team, but uh, obviously he's going to – we're going to see, does he have more bounce to his step this year, and can he shoot the ball at, at a higher percentage? Yeah, the, the turf toe – let me go, go ahead, the, And, David, you've coached so many guys. You know, turf toe's an injury, the other dude's getting basketball. Does that, how, does that affect your ability to penetrate, to drive, yeah. to have that skip more than your shot? 
And, and how much is the shot affected? Because you got to have the lift. You know, the shot yeah, starts yeah, down. Yeah, it's affected all over. And, 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 and it's a lot of times stuff like that, it's the worst thing you can possibly have because it just nags and nags and you never get over it. And I, I've had, you know, players ask me, okay, I've got a shin splint. Uh, what do I do? And you have to say, well, the only thing you can do for it's rest it. And you say, well, when are we going to get to rest? We practice every day. We've got two, three games a week. I went, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> so you, you're, I mean, that, that's what it, it is, what it is. So it's, it's just one of those, it, it, it has every type, everything in the world to do with your game. You know, I'm watching the Masters yesterday and, and, and watching Tiger Woods try to bend, the can't even bend over to get the ball out of the cup. You know, because his back, and you know, you can't play golf if you're, you're, you're you've got a bad yeah. back. Well, you can't play basketball either if you've got a turf toe. So, yeah. hopefully, I, I do think though it, it probably impacts his, his uh, penetration a little bit more than with his shooting. But like you say, you've got the lift, and you, you've got to plan off your toes. So, uh, and that's what you explode from. So, yeah, it, it can have, uh, it could be detrimental both ways. AJ, what do you – you talked about him being a – you know, like Garrison Brooks said, a Swiss Army knife. Do you expect – what do you think his role is on this year's team? Do you expect it to kind of stay the same? Are we going to see him kind of in different positions all over the court? What do you, where do you see that, that, that coming? Well, because Swiss Army knife is a term that's very much associated with among Carolina fans with Theo Pinson, mm-hmm. I will say that not all Swiss Army knives look alike and, and, and are alike. Mm -hmm. Theo was a different player. Theo could dip his hands into a lot of baskets, but he was a more emphatic player than what we've seen from Leakey. He was more of a guy that would get into the other team's head because he was constantly talking and there were some theatrics to his game and he was an energy guy. I, I, and he's a really smart player, too. Leakey's actually more skilled with the handle right now than, than Theo was going into his junior year. Might even be a more under control passer. Theo's a really good passer, but did turn it over some. Uh, so when people think Swiss Army Knife and Leakey, think of the 2021 version, not the 2017 to 2018 Theo Pinson version. Different players. But, yes, I think he could be that for this team. Remember, he started games at four different positions last year. Yeah, the one that is. Garrison missed at Louisville, Leakey started at the four. <laughs> he, started, he played the four a couple of other times. He started seven games at the point. He started the two, mostly at the three. He was all over the place. He was doing that with the injury. So imagine the load that he was carrying a year ago. But you know what? They actually played pretty well toward the tail end of that seven-game stretch when he was at the point. Their assist-to-turnover ratio numbers were better. They were scoring better. Their offensive efficiency was up. And then Cole Anthony came back, and Leakey slid back over to the three. So I think he can be that guy. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be the number two point guard, the number three point guard, the emergency point guard. I don't know what it is, but I know that Roy Williams will be comfortable as long as Leakey's healthy, that whatever role he asks him to do in a particular game, Leakey's probably going to be able to come through and do a pretty solid job with it. So we want a Swiss Army knife made in Switzerland, not one in China, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't want a rubber one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, AJ, I want to go back to you for one more question. How big – you kind of talked a little bit about it right there, but how big do you think he could be for this team when you just consider how versatile he is as a player? I think he's the kind of guy that can play really, really well at a high level, the kind of player that Roy talks about in postgame. Mm-hmm. as being one of the important players of the game. But you look down there and you see maybe nine points, six rebounds, four assists. But he's got two steals, got a block shot, and just a great glue facilitator, you know, help side defense, just always in the right spot, the right place. But I also think he's the kind of guy this year that if they if the matchups are such that they need Leakey to put 16, 17, 18 points on the board, I think that guy's there. I really do. And I trust what Roy said a year ago. I've Mm -hmm. been around Roy Williams for 17 years. If there's one thing I can tell you about him is he doesn't BS you. If he thinks a guy can be an NBA player, it's because he truly, if he says it, he truly believes it. So he's seen healthy leaky. When we haven't seen healthy leaky churning those wheels, he's seen that guy before. His teammates are seeing that over the last couple of months and they're raving about him. So I think that a much better version of what we saw a year ago is certainly in store and maybe even better than that. 
I like his potential this season, and he's certainly going to be a guy that's not going to lose you a lot of games. Unless he has a bad shooting game, he's not going to lose you games cerebrally. He's not going to make dumb decisions. He's not going to loaf. He's going to be fully involved and invested in every possession. So they've got, again, we were talking in the Garrison Brooks video about how, how an older player could teach the younger players. I think Leakey will be able to be an example in that respect for the younger players. Absolutely. David, I want to ask you one last question before we wrap it up. Um, just looking at considering Leaky Black's body type, the kind of kid, how versatile he is. Do you think he's just, you know, a consistent developed jump shot away from being a, you know, a legit NBA prospect? I, I don't know that you can say NBA prospect uh, with the numbers that he's had. I mean, he, he, he would really, really have to blow up. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't even – consider that right now I mean he's definitely a guy who needs to come back for that fourth year mm -hmm. uh you know and play as a senior but I think in the short term what I look at right now and, and Andrew touched on that and it's funny when he was talking about glue guy the word that went through my mind right before he said that was facilitator you know that he just kind of can mesh everything together and make everybody around him better because the team's young and I, I don't think we've got a lot of questions about the inside game. I believe we've got a talented backcourt at North Carolina. But I wonder uh, if, if the dynamics are there where there's that fit, those true positions. And, and kind of here's what I mean. I think we've said this year if there's one spot that we kind of look at and say, okay, we, this one really needs to be handled and they need to be good at it as the point guard spot. And yeah. there's the talk about Caleb Love, but I I'm still think when I've seen him that Caleb Love is a better two than a point guard, and but he's very talented, so he could be that point guard guy. Now, if you ask me, can he play the shooting guard? Absolutely, he can be as good as anybody in the country. But I'm still we're gonna have to see him be good at the point guard under pressure. So then you look at other spots and you look at those bigger guard those bigger wings you know like Leaky Black and the other one that comes to mind is Puff Johnson well Puff Johnson's six seven or, or excuse me he's six eight two one ninety Leaky six eight one ninety five so what do we expect from Puff Johnson as a freshman? I mean it, it could could he beat Leaky out or is it like Leaky says hey this is my job I'm going to be the best big wing so and let's say that Caleb Love can play the point okay well, what about some of these other guards? Can Kerwin Walton, can he step in and play that? And I'm looking over here at some names. We talked about, you know, maybe R.J. Davis, Ebony Harris. Can they play those spots? So there's one good thing, that versatility. The one through the three, they may need Leaky Black to be that guy. So he can do a lot of things, and that's good because – we may not be sure yet exactly what his role and what he's asked to do. I mean, if could he play the point guard and come in and go with that role at six eight? We've talked about him as a three, but could he play the point? If he went over and, and let's say uh, Caleb's having some problems playing the point guard spot, could he step into that, move Caleb into his natural spot, which I feel like the two, and man, all of a sudden the backcourt kind of takes off. So that's one thing Roy is really going to have to do early on is try to fit pieces. And I, I, it may be the start of the ACC season or maybe even farther than that before you, they really realize, hey, this is our comfort zone. This is who needs to play where, and this is our best fit. But there's one good thing about a, leaky, a player like Leaky Black. He gives you some versatility, so he gives the coach some wiggle room to be able to, to move around and adjust and, and kind of tinker with things. Absolutely. Hey, let me throw you this one uh, last thing before, before we close out this video, Jacob and, and David. Uh, a few weeks ago, before we had the availability with the players, I was working on some advanced pieces that we ran back in, in October, and I asked for a few quotes from each player. And I didn't get Leakey's one night because they said that they were waiting for him to come off the court. Mm -hmm. And that night he decided he wasn't going to leave the court until he hit 300 threes. Mm -hmm. So Garrison Brooks has come in the offseason hitting the three, shooting the three, was there. It was very comparable with the way Leakey Black treated shooting the perimeter shot. 
I think he wants to be a really, really good three. I think he wants to be an assist guy from the three. And if you can hit the perimeter shot from the wing and your turf toes fine and you can put the ball on the floor and drive, imagine what kind of season he can have if all that comes together. But he's going to have to hit that three. And like a Garrison Brooks, that's got to rub off on freshmen. Yeah, they no see that and you set the example, and that's passed on. That's how you build a program. That work ethic's passed on to the next guy. He passes it on to the guys coming in next year and, and, and so forth, and, and it just it just goes down the line. Culture. It's not a one-year thing. Culture. Exactly. And everything I've heard, the, the new kids have totally embraced the culture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. I totally agree with you guys. So, great stuff, guys. Leaky Black, I'm Thanks. really interested to see kind of the next steps he takes – this season and where he can go. Cause like, I, I do agree with, but with, with, with what you said in particular, AJ, just about him still having a lot of potential and, you know, finding where his role is like David mentioned, I think is going to be very interesting on this year's team. That's going to do it for the leaky black edition of the THI season preview podcast. As always guys, be sure to like, be sure to share it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.